so to begin weathering our uh, demo excavator here, we're going to start off with the, once again, the, the panel liner. And as I'm sure you've uh, picked up in this video, if you want to make something look dirty and uh, in use, uh, then you want to use that black color to bring out whatever uh, details there are uh, hidden in your model. And this is going to be no different. So we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a nice coat of the black to everything. It doesn't have to be thick, just enough to bring out the details. And as you can see, as I'm doing this, the details are coming out and, you know, they're, they're always there. Um, but it's just, it's easier to see them, obviously, when uh, they're, they're highlighted. In this case, I guess more, more low lighted. But what you're going to do is just cover the whole model real quick, bring out that detail, Let's see it. Uh, you don't need to get real fancy with the black because we are going to use some other colors. So basically you're just trying to get it rid of that plastic shine, bring out the detail a little bit. Uh, one thing you do want to do is keep the hydraulics clean. Uh, if you've, I'm sure you've seen heavy equipment, but if you paid attention to it, you'll notice that the hydraulics are always shiny. Uh, that is because they're pressure sealed basically around the, uh, the housings. Um, because of the, the fluid and they actually have to stay clean so the fluid doesn't get dirty so um, basically you're never going to build up rust on a hydraulic you're not going to build up you know grime on a hydraulic because it's always moving uh, and, and it stays clean because it, it's sliding in and out of that seal uh, along the hydraulic uh, casing there so uh, never never weather that unless you're weathering a piece of equipment that hasn't moved in years um, always keep the hydraulics clean and shiny so for that purpose, the plastic is, is just fine. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to remove this um, of the upper body of the excavator from the tracks. It just makes getting the tracks uh, painted easier. And although we're doing that on this machine, your machine, depending on which you know, model you're painting, may or may not have screws. These ones are real nice because they're, they're positionable. And so there are some screws in, in them, some plastic joints, but with a small screwdriver, these come right off and set the screw aside so you don't lose it because you will need it later. And I guarantee you won't have one of those hanging around. And then the body just pulls right off. So we're gonna set that over here. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna work on our tracks. Okay, for the tracks, um, we've got a couple of different things that we're going to use first, uh, and these are all Vallejo colors. Uh, we have a gunmetal. It is 80.054, and this actually came in a kit. Uh, then we're going to hit that with a black wash. Um, this is an acrylic black wash. The accent liner is a uh, enamel, so make sure that you're using the Vallejo wash in this case, which is 80.201. And then finally, we're going to top it off with a uh, dry brush of silver, which is 80.052. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get those colors set up in the palette and then we'll be right back. Okay, so our first step on the tracks here is we're going to take our gunmetal uh, colored paint and we're going to apply it to the tracks. When you do this, you don't have to be, you know, it's not, it's not a tedious process but you wanna make sure you don't get it on anywhere other than the tracks. So top of the tracks, make sure you fill in all of the, the grooves of your, of your tracked equipment. Um, and then you also wanna get this, there's this edge here. So what happens is, is these crawlers are sliding along the, uh, the ground. Basically these pads pretty much get scratched off. So all the paint that comes on there from the factory uh, it just it, it just wears right off. And what you'll see is if a piece of equipment's been sitting for a couple of days, it'll build up a very thin coat of rust. And within moments of it going back to work, you know, say like after a weekend or something, uh, all that rust is off and you're left with, with the shiny metal again. But what also happens is, you know, dirt and mud and all kinds of other, you know, stuff on the construction site gets stuck in the tracks. So... We want to go ahead and model that detail too, and we'll, we'll get that in just a second here. But what this technique is going to represent is a uh, machine that's on the site. It's working. 
so it's rolling around and that means the tracks are clean and uh, you know they're not going to be full of rust so depending on you know what you're trying to model this may or may not be appropriate if you are modeling just a load sitting on a flat car for instance then this technique is probably not appropriate because those are going to be factory models you know coming right off the uh, factory line and so they are going to uh, still have that factory paint on the tracks uh, if you're modeling something that's been sitting abandoned for a while this technique would also not be appropriate because like i said you would have you know rust built up on the on the trucks for or from the tracks for them not moving so um this is this is strictly for working equipment that is um you know on, on your active construction site so we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we're gonna come back with the wash okay so the next step is pretty simple you're gonna take your brush with the vallejo black wash and you're just gonna brush it over everything and let that settle into the uh, tracks here a little bit I, I did it all the way around and i included even doing the side a little bit because it's really shiny and that black will help knock it down a bit so just go ahead and cover everything you just did with that gun metal cover it with the black so that you get that that basically that bright high area and that dark low area um, and then once you've once you've got it good and covered you're gonna want to set this piece aside because it's gonna need to dry before we do the next step because the next step is a, is a dry brush and if the model is wet well it sort of takes away the dry brush effect because what you're going to end up doing is picking up those those damp colors and then you're going to spread them all over the place so that's that's not what you want so after you've got gone and applied your black wash here go ahead and just set that aside and we'll move on to some other things while we're waiting for this to dry uh, because by now our the body of our machine has dried and we can go ahead and get that weathered up so set your set your tracks aside and let's go back to the body so what we're going to do with the body i am going to ak interactive and i've got two colors i'm using engine grime and streaking grime and as you can tell from the description they are grimy colors and what i want to do is not paint the whole model like i did with the uh, with the black wash but I do want to hit some certain areas and I'm still using the same brush that I've been using the same sort of flat brush it's not particularly wide it's not particularly um, you know special actually I believe this came in a Walmart set so uh, that's what we're gonna be using and all we're trying to do is get a little bit of variation so I'm gonna start with the engine grime and yep you guessed it I'm gonna start around where the engine compartment of the machine is so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to touch it very lightly to down here and you know I got a little bit too much on the brush here it's just gonna keep gonna let that because it's a wash it's going to once again seek its own level but I'm not gonna to be too worried about where it goes because I want that overall grime effect that it's going to give me so I'm going to grime it up just a little bit and let that show some variation a different color here on the on the hood of this equipment and then you know what I'm also going to do since this is a darker color here I'm going to take it a little bit a lot of times what you'll notice is the back of these machines will get bumped on stuff especially when they're rotating um, just because of a careless operator or somebody stacked something behind him, he didn't see it, which I guess still is the operator's fault. But, um, you know, so there's, there's sometimes a little bit of scratch. You will notice that if it gets too scratched in the back, um, you will see rust build up there. So that may be a good place to put some rust, but, uh, you know, on, on this model, we're not, we're not going to do that. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking for that effect. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my brush just slightly into the um, enamel uh, cleaner here and because what that'll do is one it'll give me a little bit of pliability with the next color that I'm using and this is streaking grime and it'll help the colors mix a little bit you don't want to paint the model necessarily with enamel um, cleaner but what happens is a little bit on your brush makes it flow a little easier so um, now I just want to hit some of these upper areas here 
once again, I'm not going to paint the whole model. I just want to get some detail on here um, to show grime and dirt. Highlight some of these areas maybe that didn't get as much in the uh, in the first uh, act, so to speak. And then uh, also want to get some of the uh, uh, variation in here because uh, when they're on site, obviously they're going to pick up a lot of different uh, a lot of different dirt and grime and especially with a demo excavator. You know, the demo sites are very, very dusty, even though they do try to use water to control the dust. Uh, it just, you know, you're, you're going to make dirt. So I want to hit some some of these, like these knuckles here where the uh, where the machine uh, goes together. Uh, we'll get some dirt in there. Uh, if you have an oily um, wash as well or, or, or develop an oily wash, that would be appropriate at all the moving parts. Uh, if you want to get that crazy in detailing, I, I think that would definitely... Definitely go a long way. And then don't be afraid to apply this pretty heavily to the base. Um, these machines don't crawl particularly fast, but what they do is sometimes they'll fling up some mud so we can we can represent that a little bit. Um, you know, we, here at the bottom. So uh, once we're sure that we've got everything covered and I'm trying not to touch the too wet areas, you gotta be careful here because you will put, uh, you will put fingerprints in the uh, wash and then that fingerprint will dry in the wash and then good luck trying to get it out of there it just it sort of sticks it and it's uh i'm speaking from experience here so okay so once we get this to a point that that we like it we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave it alone we're going to let it dry um if you don't like the way something came out uh, maybe something's a little too heavy you can do what i said earlier you can put a little bit of a enamel uh, thinner on and you can actually wipe off some of the color I don't know if you can see that or not but the color will start moving around and and, and sort of it activates basically and you can actually get some really cool effects by doing this um, by just letting the uh, enamel go where it wants to go and it also kind of simulates okay well you know the the grime got wet and then it started flowing and then it dripped down the machine so you can get a pretty decent uh, pretty decent look on your on your boom by doing that so if any area came out and you're looking at it and you're just going well that's a little too thick or that's not quite what I wanted you know just get a little bit of enamel on your uh, brush and using a downward streaking motion sort of make the uh, dirt looks like look like it's streaking and you'll get you'll get some pretty cool effects there that that are you know unique to your machine basically so Go ahead and play around with that for a little bit and we should be good to go back to our trucks now and finish those up. Okay, so our next step is going to be what happens to this building when it's been abandoned for any length of time. Now, I've been in the construction industry going on almost 14 years now, um, and I've been a homeowner for 10 of those years. So I have seen my own building plus other people's building, what happens when they don't take care of them, uh, especially in the larger buildings with the more complex systems. Um, as soon as you stop doing your maintenance or you stop inhabiting the building entirely, uh, it's not very long before nature starts taking it back. Um, and so to, to represent that, we are going to start off with uh, Tamiya, and this is a soil effect. It's an acrylic-based paint, basically, um, and it's got a texture to it. So uh, it's almost like a sand that's in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a big old glob of it, and we're going to set it in the corner. And we're going to sort of smush it around here to, to represent, you know, dirt and grime. And you're going to say, hey, you know, you, you wouldn't really have dirt on the roof of a high rise. And in general, I would say that you are correct. Uh, unless you're one of the hippie types that needs a green roof. Uh, there's usually not dirt on your roof. Um, but you do get in a collection of just crap that is in the air and stuff that is flying around and deterioration of the building itself so you may actually pick up some some dirty sooty um, texture so to speak on on your roof and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to uh, enhance it a little bit more here uh, with some if I can get my fingers to work here we're going to enhance it here with a little bit of ground foam just to um, 
make it look a little bit less uniform. And we're not going to apply this technique everywhere because um, it wouldn't be everywhere. Um, but that is kind of the look that we're looking for. And because that is an a wet acrylic paint. We're going to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to come back and then we're going to hit it with a little bit of white glue just to make sure everything stays in place. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to do it anywhere else. That was just in that one little corner because there's a place where, you know, the wind and the rain and everything can kind of push crap against the, the uh, roof. So we're going to, we're going to stop right there with that technique. We are going to repeat it on some of these floors going down here. Um, and then we're also going to add um, some some other vines and things that because plants are opportunistic right so if you've got dirt somewhere here or elsewhere um, and a seed can make its way up there usually by animal and bird and bug something like that um, and that seed drops in there it's gonna grow as best it can so we're gonna represent that here in just a second okay so what I've done here is simple enough I've taken some of the Woodland Scenics it's a poly foam fiber uh, material and I pulled apart a very small piece, but what you're noticing is, see all those little strands that they're just going every which way? Yeah, we're going to have to get in there and we're going to have to trim those off because they just do not look realistic. So I'm going to trim those off and reattach this once it's all cleaned up. And then I'll show you what the final look is after I take care of that. Okay, so I got a little carried away and went uh, an extra step here. I uh, forgot to put the camera back on. So um, what I did was I cleaned up those stray fibers um, from the vine here uh, with a pair of scissors, got it into a shape that I wanted it. Uh, then I applied a little bit of white glue and some talus. And the talus is nothing special. It's just Woodland Scenics. And this is, I'm trying to see here, there's Natural Fine is, is what I used. And now I've got a crumbly, dirty rock looking area and I got some vines hanging out of it. And I think that's, that's good enough. I'm going to leave that just the way that is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of some of these other openings here in the building and with a similar technique. And then I will come back and show you the result. Okay. So what I want to do is take you on a once over the building here to show you the techniques that I showed you. I used all over the place here. And basically what I was trying to do is mimic a collapsed building. Uh, you know, maybe something happened. Could have been hell. It could have been anything. Um, terrorist attack. Weather. Just ignoring it. You know, there's lots of things that can cause a building to start to crumble. Uh, and obviously it's been there long enough that some opportunistic weeds and vines and all sorts of other things have, have crept in and have taken over the structure. So what I wanted to do is just highlight the edges. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, detail out each of these floors and really, really go nuts with this model because it pretty much is a, as a blank canvas. Um, I, I didn't need that for, for my purposes because it's going to be a um, abandoned building that's being demoed and it's in the background. So basically all I needed to do was make a building um, and, and be done with it. And at this stage, uh, if you wanted to model broken glass and stuff like that, you, you could do all of that um, and, and it would look really cool. So uh, if you are interested in stuff like this, I know I've mentioned him earlier in the video and I'm going to mention him one more time because most of the techniques that I, that I sort of pirated here to do this, um, I got as uh, inspiration um, or actually a direct technique from a channel called Nscale Dystopia. I'm going to put a link to him down in the description. Uh, if you like the abandoned buildings and the post-apocalyptic type stuff, um, he's doing some really cool stuff on his channel and it's really fun to watch. Um, and as far as I know, there's nobody else on YouTube that's doing stuff quite like that. So if this is in, in you know, something that you're into, definitely check him out. Um, his techniques are good for, especially if you're into some other modeling. You know, I, some of these guys that I follow, are, they do the war gaming, which I'm going to be honest with you, I don't understand it, um, but I know that the parts and pieces are cool and it makes for some great modeling. So, uh, yeah, for instance, I have a dragon here I'm going to be working on uh, outside of, um, you know, train time. And I, I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a part of a game. No idea how to play it. Doesn't really matter. Dragon looks cool. So, 
you know, you can get into some some very different things here. But anyway, check out his, his page. Uh, but this is going to be it for our building. I'm not going to go any further uh, in detailing or weathering this thing. I think this is pretty much where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and finish our excavator. All right, folks, we are back here and we are going to be working on the last little bit here of our excavator treads. And uh, so we've got our dark undertones. We have our bare metal color. Uh, the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to add uh, a highlight to this and we're going to use the silver that I had shown you earlier. Now, this is going to be a dry brush. So we want it to be uh, minimal paint here. And the highlight uh, of this, all pun intended, is to just highlight the ridges of this track. Uh, we don't want to get too crazy with it. We just want to bring out some extra shiny bits here at the top. And that's pretty much it. We don't want to, um, we don't want to paint the truck um, or the track anymore. We don't want to uh, get uh, over we don't want to overuse this technique because it's uh, first of all the paint's got a little bit of a shine to it uh, a little bit of a sparkle to it which is fine but uh, it's also you don't want it to uh, you know o overkill some of those dark tones if you do and you and you just you know overdo it um, then you can go back and basically repeat the process but what I'm doing is I'm taking the brush and I'm laying it as flat as I can and I'm dragging it across. What that's going to do is it's going to stop the bristles from getting down into the track itself. And because uh, we, we don't we don't want that. We, we don't want that to get uh, we don't want the paint to get it anywhere other than the, than the high spots. And I know this is the bottom and you're probably never going to see it, but I'm going to hit it anyway, just because um, I want to make sure that I've got everything covered. So I'm going all the way around here just to make sure that I've got everything even on the ends done and then you get a kind of a shiny look just like this and that is pretty much what these tracks are going to look like on the real machine as he's going around doing doing his thing so uh, i don't hit the track on the side at all i don't want to highlight anything there um, i just want to get this and it doesn't even have to be totally perfect um, you can leave some areas that maybe aren't as uh, highlighted and that's totally fine um, but what, when you're done, you want something that looks just like this. This looks like a crawler. Now, what we haven't addressed is these areas in between here, these, these ambiguous areas where all this detail is that you're going to lose outside of, um, the bright light here that's coming in for the, uh, <laughs> for the camera. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a very fine brush, which uh, I just had here and it has seemed to disappear. Oh, there we go. All right. We're gonna take a very, very, very fine brush. And we're going to use um, a couple of other colors here that are um, from the same uh, kit that uh, the other track paints have come from. And so there is a uh, Vallejo paint. It is dry rust 80.136. And then we have a uh, wash that is a heavy sienna. And it is 80.154. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this dry rust. And it is a uh, it is an acrylic paint, so it's not a uh, uh, it's not a it's not a wash. Um, and you know, actually, I had those backwards. The dry rust is a wash. The uh, <laughs> the uh, sienna is a is a paint. Um, so scratch what I said. Go back, um, and we are going to actually start with the heavy sienna. And so, uh, what I'm going to do here is grab this. Again, and just a little bit on the tip here of the brush, and I'm going to start up at the top, and I'm going to streak my way down here. So this is listed as a base paint. It's a little bit thicker than some of the other paints I've noticed, at least it appears to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, some streaks, because I am trying to simulate wear and tear, not necessarily grime. Um, you could use this as, a, as the grime and not do this, the, the closeout step that we're going to do, but, uh, um, you know, that, that, that'll work. But what I want to do is I want to get in here and get all of these little track details highlighted so that you can uh, actually see them. Uh, it'll be one thing. And then, 
I don't want to overdo it too much because you know too much of a good thing turns out bad. So we're going to stop right there. I'm going to flip this baby around and repeat the process here. Don't worry about copying it because mud does not stick equally on all sides. So feel free to hit other areas. And one thing that I should mention, and I, I noticed that a lot of folks, you know, in their videos don't do this. They show you exactly how they did it. Um, there's obviously other techniques. There's other brushes, there's other equipment, there's other paints that you can use to, to do this. So this is what I have on hand. Um, it's what works for me. You will get different results. You might get better results. Um, you know, there's always the chance that you get uh, not a better result. Uh, so uh, trial and error. Uh, don't don't be afraid to try things. Um, and I know, especially if you got something like this excavator that's, you know, basically not replaceable uh, at this point. Uh, you know, it's it takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of thought before you want to go in there and, you know, paint it. But uh, you know, give it a shot. Most things that you do in the hobby can be undone or or redone. So um, you know, just just know that you can go back and always and always rework something till you get it right um, for the for the most part okay now what we want to do is we're going to start on the side that we already put in because it's going to be a little bit drier um, and i'm going in with my wash and i just want to coat over this a little bit with some of the wash material i want it to mix so you know i'm gonna i'm gonna mix it a little bit i'm gonna kind of streak it a little bit and I'm going for a well-loved look here, uh, just because this thing is sitting in the mud, and that means it's picking up dirt, it's picking up grime. And this is a nice wash. It, it really does bring out a good color. That is pretty much what you would see on, on the real machine, so I, I do like this particular wash. Once again, it is not the only way to do this. Um, I am trying to keep the paint off of this sort of nebulous black area because on the real machine that is not filled in plastic. It's it's you can see through it. That's the tracks riding up on these on these rollers. Um, I would not make any attempt um, to try to cut that open or open that up. That plastic there is really thick and basically it's it's how it's molded. So I would I would just leave that alone. But uh, if you can keep the paint off of it, that will go a little bit of ways to um, just sort of accentuate the shadow and you know that's that's not a bad that's not a bad thing so once I've got this in here and between each stroke of the the wash I am taking the uh, I am taking the brush over to a paper towel and I'm wiping off um, whatever paint I pick up because I don't want to smear that onto the next you know, onto the next stroke. So when you see the brush disappear off off camera, there, I'm not just grabbing paint. I'm also grabbing, uh, drying it off just a bit. All right, and then I want to mix these colors just a just a little bit here. And once you get that look the way you want it, um, understand that it's going to dry. It dries a little darker. It doesn't have that sheen to it. Um, so give it give it a second. Let this all dry. And then we're going to come back with the last effect before we can put this back on the tracks. Now, one thing that we didn't do and we need to is we talked about how the machine itself um, is going to see a lot of abuse and a lot of wear and tear. So... What you want to do here now is in the jaw of this machine. Now these jaws on, on the real machine are pretty cool. They they rotate just like this one does. They can twist. They can they can chomp. They can. Um, if, if you've ever seen a demo excavator work, it's 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 really fun to watch. Um, but once again, this bright orange uh, is not going to be the color these things are. Um, they have uh, where the where the we'll call it the action end of this thing here, uh, the business end of the jaw. It it, it just it just gets torn up. Um, so we are going to do the same treatment up here um, that we did to the tracks. We're going to we're going to paint the colors of the underground uh, under under paint uh, steel in there, and we're going to make it look like it's been chomping on concrete and it's worn the paint off. So uh, 
no no special technique there. It's exactly how I did the track. I'm going to put the gunmetal gray on first. Then I'm going to apply a wash, and then I'm going to come back with the um, the silver, just a little tiny bit, maybe to hit some of the highlights, some of the fresh scrapes. Um, but that'll be it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. I'm going to come back. We'll get this thing reassembled. Okay. So for our final uh, step here on the tracks, we are going to be using. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, AK Interactive, and we are using uh, what is known as muddy ground and it is a diorama acrylic and it is very much like the mud that we used on the building uh, it's just a very thick acrylic paint it has uh, like a sand or some kind of texture in it but the important thing is it, it also has a, a gloss finish to it so it looks like fresh churned mud or dirt which if you are on a demo site is probably going to be the condition of the site and you're going to get when you get it on your brush it looks kind of like this it's kind of gross and sloppy looking now one thing to remember is your machine is moving right so it's gonna stick kind of on the tracks a little bit but basically uh it's gonna get knocked off because well it's moving so um you can put a little bit on there like you know the track kind of came up and then it got it you know the machine stopped moving and the, the mud stayed on there um, but where you really want to get it is in here because uh, on the undercarriage of this machine is where this mud just builds. And we want to get nice big globs of it underneath here um, because when the tracks turn, uh, they kick it up and it just basically falls back down. And some of it works its way underneath the, uh, underneath the track. And if you're in the northeast like i am you actually at this time of year run into a condition where if you don't clean the tracks off it can actually freeze in there and really gum up the works um so you'll, you'll notice sometimes guys with torches and other things on their tracks trying to <laughs> trying to get the mud out um if they didn't clean it the night before so uh actually we just had that happen on a job site with a piece of equipment so um if you get too much on here, it is the same technique that you use to remove the enamel stuff. Just take a wet brush, and this is water, so you need, just need acrylic. And you can move it around a little bit and get it to where you actually wanted it. And you don't want to hide all the detail you just put on. So uh, it, will, it will get wet and it will flow, and then once it does that, you can just take a paper towel and scrape off the bits that you don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It'll actually give you a pretty nice technique um, because what it does is it makes it look like the mud flowed somewhere um, because, well, yeah, it did. And it gets it into places where it may not have gone otherwise. Um, so it's not, a bad, it's not a bad look. It dries uh, to look like mud. So let it dry before you get you know, do too many iterations on it because you're going to want to see what it actually looks like. If you get the more watered down version, you can actually put dabs of that on your track, which will dry looking like muddy dirt. So go ahead, feel free to do that. And then once you've got that all done, um, I always like to come back and, and add a glob because the thickness sort of, sort of washes off when you when you wet it so you seem to lose that grit so i put a little bit of put a little bit of a glob there now i'm gonna let this sit i'm gonna let it dry before i try to assemble it and then i'm gonna see what the color looks like make sure i got the color texture that i want uh if i did i'm gonna go ahead and put it together if i didn't i'll i'll you know wet it and take it back off again so let's uh let's come back and get this thing assembled okay so now that this is starting to dry and i can see how it's looking um that is that's pretty awesome. I'm happy with the way that came out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. And we're going to go ahead and reassemble it. So it's just a matter of screwing these uh, two pieces back together with the little screw that hopefully you saved. And I think the next step is to take it over to the layout and see what it looks like on the scene. Oh yeah, I'm working on this little project too. It's a little dozer. Um, it's a, actually It's actually a toy. Um, but I'm giving it the same treatment that I gave um, these models, and so 
in a few minutes you're going to see it right on the layout.